Oh, guy town! <laughs> Now that's what I call a Tokai. Dumb. Cam. <laughs> hey everyone, I'm Ryan. And I'm Steve, and this is 60 Cycle Hum, the guitar, buying, selling, trading, modding, fixing, breaking, reviewing, playing, podcast. podcast. I got a little foamy boy over yeah, here. Yeah, I didn't do as bad as you. Usually, I'm the no. bad pour. I was trying to keep it low. Do you consider a lot of foam a good pour or a bad pour? I know Your, your pour is better than my pour. Oh, that tastes good. Ah, oh, whatever. Mm. I'll just drink. Here, bring bring that bad boy back over here. That's yeah, refreshing. That's like the perfect beer for the weather today. Kind of, kind really of a, a sticky, hot, warmish day. This is a Nola Brewing Company mm. Belgian style pale ale. That's hitting the spot. Called Muses. This is the last of our beer sent by uh, Ian. Do you know what? Person. Do you know what episode this is, Steve? This is episode. If you want to send us beer, there's an address in the description. Just send us beer. This is episode 440. That's right, Steve. It's episode 440, not 432. Mm -hmm. Not, you know, 569, not 420. It's episode 440, Steve. 440. 440. That's A. That is A. This is the tutor episode. A is the tutor episode. It's the tutor episode. So we're going to talk tuners. It's talking tuners. It's tuner talking time, guys. Tu tuner time. This is going to be an episode that goes down in history. I don't know if there's ever been a guitar podcast to hit 440 episodes, but we've done it. There's prob there probably is. And we're celebrating with tuners, baby. We got all sorts of tuners on the desk here. How we're many episodes did Six String Bliss have? I don't know. They I don't know if they... they I don't think they, they counted with numbers. I think they... Counted with hieroglyphic symbols for some reason, or they did, it had like a barcode or something. I don't Let's know. Let's find out. Six string bliss. This is this is not what we were going to talk about, Steve. What was that? That was a gross sound that came out of my mouth. It was like an involuntary burp. It just cr well, they only had two hundred and seventy four episodes. Wow. Well, damn. Sheesh. I mean, that's only. I mean, that's still years of episodes. That's four years of episodes if they do them. Every every week, you know. Um, so tuners, Steve, what's a what's your tuner that you're using these days? I am using what's your go to tuner? I am using the uh, well. Let's let's put this a different way, Ryan. Uh, well, okay. My my go to first of all, my go to tuner is a uh, Polytune Mini Noor. Mm. Actually, my go to tuner these days is the tuner that's built into the HX Stomp. Ah, uh, but if it was a standalone, it would be. The uh, the tiny and I have the tiny those. little brother of this guy. This is the Polytune. I've got the Polytune Mini Noor, which is the the tiny black one. I couldn't find mine. I don't know where it is. I'm telling you, it's it's in your office. It's not in my office, Steve. It's in your desk. And then, uh, well, this is where you ask me what my tuners are right now. What's your tuner? What's your go-to tuner? Right? I have decided that I'm just a, a Peterson Strobosop boy. It's it's an expensive tuner. And is big. It's like you should be wearing this shirt. <laughs> but I really, really like the big screen on it. And I like that it's just kind of always on and it does the it's super, super fast and super accurate. I'm kind of just I should get rid of a bunch of these tuners. I mean, right here I've got my original TU2. I can't sell this one. It's got my initials scratched yeah, I don't the think side. you can ever get rid of a t so I, I made I mean, this first of all no one wants it tu threes exist I now. made this joke uh you know I could give it to a kid uh earlier like oh what if you were doing like a fantasy tuner draft right I think mm. this one I think the strobo stomp it's you know you're either a strobo stomp guy or you're a turbo tuner right you're right a turbo tuner I want to try one you of know, those turbo turbo tuners. Uh, that's gonna be your number one that's the one everyone's like if I'm the number one pick I'm taking a strobo stomp or I'm taking right. this. I think the boss TU2 is that like uh for like the sports people out there, the boss TU2 is like Larry Fitzgerald. You're gonna draft him like sixth or seventh round. If you're lucky, he's still around. If you got savvy people in your league, maybe he's not. Because you know he's always gonna put up numbers. 
Maybe right. they're not going to be the best numbers, but he's always going to put up numbers. He's it's, never going to let yeah. you down. It's exactly like Jerry and Carmichael, which is why I always put him in my fantasy high diving draft. Yeah, I'm more of yeah. a. I'm more I of made a, that name up. That's not a real person. I'm more of a, a Ray Lugasi <laughs> for my fantasy. Thank you for team. yes anding me on that. That's a callback to way early in the podcast. I mean, we're going to celebrate 440, you know, we're going to get nostalgic. This one trips me out and I know it's a thing. This is an iSet Looper tuner. And we've got the Kuvave version right here. This is a limited edition. It's got oh, the, dang. the 60 cycle hum logo on the back. That's right. And the 60 cycle font for Kuvave. Kuvave doesn't exist anymore. They're, they're shark chili now. Oh, weird. I don't know if that means they got bought out or just, I don't know. I haven't talked to them in years. But uh, we got two of these tuners here. I want you to take this, Steve, and I want you to put it into the uh, into the shipping pile for goodies for okay. people. Oh, whoa, this turned on. Yeah, I've got the little flamma clip on FT, tuner here. FT one. I think I I think, this, I think I think I sent a few of those out to uh, to folks in the inner circle. I think this is actually my favorite clip on tuner. I've had snarks. I've had all the little free ones that you get from Nam and stuff like that. Yeah. But this, this one, is the one I like. This one's got a real good light on it. It's got a real good light on it. Oh, I think I have. Oh, I might have given it back to him. Uh, I had Perfecto's clip-on tuner here that he left. <laughs> oh no! Now I've gotten into some sort of sub menu. I don't know what I've, I've just uh, broken it. I'm gonna have to download a manual for a flame. You want to see how this thing works? Oh my gosh! We got this. By the same guy who sent us these shirts, uh, Mr. Fleming. Did you're episode. cracking something. That's 18 years yeah. old. There's 18-year-old air in there. Do you think we have the immunities to deal with 18-year-old air at this point? Let's find out. Let's find this out. This is like melting in a, a glacier, dude. Should we not do this? Let's what if there's it. a ghost in there? It could have a curse on it. All right, I need a quarter-inch jack. <laughs> you're trying to set me up for a dirty joke? No. <laughs> You're going to need a longer cable than that. I wasn't going to plug it into a guitar. I just wanted to see if it would turn on. It turned on! But it's just two red lights. I don't know what that means. It's, it's got 18-year-old electricity in there, Steve. This is vintage electricity. I think it only thing. does It only does note. E. It's only an E-tuner. Is it working? I don't know. I think it might need a new battery. Do you think the two red lights mean that the battery's dead? I think so. Because nothing's changing on it. Watch it takes like a D cell somehow. No, it takes like a watch, uh, like I know. A watch battery. I don't know if am I gonna am I gonna try to make this thing work? Here, I'll put it. I mean, that's a really silly novelty thing. It's a big it keychain, but I'm assuming at one point it worked. <laughs> it's that vintage power is the problem. Yeah. Are you guys ready for the early 2000s to be vintage? Yeah, it's it's close. It's another three years. Yep. How yeah. does a tuner on this work? You just press the button, Steve. There's a tuner right there. You click it. It just shows the letter. This is the Boss Pocket GT. And I'm going to do a video on this, a dedicated video for this soon. Um, this is a great device, and the tuner on it works really great. And it, you don't mute yourself when you tune. Like, you can still hear, hear, hear yourself and whatnot. It's, so it's you actually, can annoy everyone around you. No, but it's headphones. You oh, plug your right. headphones into this. But can't you... Can't you can you run it? Like run other, it out? here's the thing. Other headphone solutions that I have, yeah, they don't have built-in tuners, or you have to go to an app, an app to do it. Yeah, this just has it on it, and it's 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 fantastic. I love it. I, I guess I was thinking like if you're using this, and then sending out through the the headphones to like a to like a you could you know a thing, then you maybe you'd want that. I'm actually surprised it doesn't have a quarter inch out. I mean, you could always, you could always do like hack that into the headphone out or whatever. All right, what the heck is this? That was uh, the. I forgot. This is a Kuvave. Uh, the Kuvave H8. Yeah, it's like a, is there an attempt at a little plug thing? It's really hard to operate, and I don't like it, and I don't know why I still have it around. Amp. Add it to the pile of things to give away. <laughs> Amp. Yeah. Gain tone mod time. Face, it's a multi Facebook. 
it, it's a multi what? effect. No, Facebook right there. Yeah, Facebook. Yeah, Mix, FB. Reverb, IR cab, and volume. So if you had to, like, what's your ideal tuner situation, Steve? I know you've got the HX Stomp now. This is a Grover. Grover that's a Grover tuner. Grover tuner. Yeah. What's this guy? Uh, that's a Rowan Frenzy, Steve. It's not a tuna. Oh, not a tuner. It's not a tuna. Not a tuna. <laughs> it's not a tuna. There we go. <laughs> Right. If you had to come we up, we wrote that joke before the show. I know, and the delivery sucks. Um, what is my ideal tuner what, situation? What is this, Steve? That's a tuner matic. That's also a tuner. That's um, the other joke we wrote before the show. What is your ID? This is why we don't write jokes before the show. Uh, <laughs> what is your like? Imagine your ideal fantasy tuner. Like, what do you have in your head when you think about that? And it, yeah, I know you have the HX stomp, but yeah, we're thinking in terms of a pedal board here. I mean, I think. So my ideal pedal board tuner, or it could be a clip on. It could be it no. Could, my ideal pedal board. It tuner can't just be part of a multi effect. You know, is uh, is is like a polytune nor like it just just I just want something small. You don't think it could be better in any way? I mean, it could probably be more accurate, but it's pretty. It, it Steve tuned. really can't imagine things. <laughs> how how do you make a tuner better? Um, how would you make it better? A stereo through. Stereo tuner, Steve. Stereo tuner. Okay. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> I'm trying. You only need to tune. Well, you said you only need to tune. You. And it wouldn't work. Be it have had two screens on it because if you're running different, I don't know. <laughs> and you, you run tuners usually first in your chain, not last. So it's like, why does it need to be stereo? But what if you are running stereo into a pedal board, but you do need a tuner on it? How do you run stereo into a pedal board? Like if two guitarists are running into the same... You're thinking about guitars, Steve. What if it's a keyboardist? Why do you need a tuner if you're a keyboardist? <laughs> That's the good question. <laughs> So what's funny is what I thought you were first asking is like when you think of a tuner, what's the first, like if you closed your eyes and someone okay. said, picture a guitar tuner, yeah, I would picture a TU2. So you would just imagine something that already exists. I would imagine a TU2. This is the difference between our personalities. Okay, if I say, Ryan, close your eyes, mm -hmm. picture a fuzz pedal, Yeah. what do you picture? Uh, it's, I just see kind of like a generic pedal. It's purple. It's got three knobs on it. So you picture basically nothing. I pictured like a kit. A kit. <laughs> you, you picture you picture the Color Sound Tone Bender Mark II BYOC kit. That's basically what you just I described. I guess so. I don't know if I it's guess purple. So. That fuzz pedal could be anything, though. But like, I, I'm thinking like... When your, I think def it, your default thing when someone says, okay, picture... Picture a car. Close your eyes and picture a car. You don't automatically like picture. No, I'm seeing. A car I'm seeing a own. Honda Civic. Yeah, you're not. Oh man, I don't reinvent the wheel every time. Dude, but I was this, like, this was shit's asking, wild. It's got four <laughs> wheels. It's got spikes. There's like five machine guns. It doesn't have headlights. It has laser beams. Now I'm imagining that, and it's a lot cooler than the Honda Civic. <laughs> yeah, you're imagining it because I'm telling you to imagine it. But like, if you like, I told my wife this the other day. She was like. Oh man, if I could have like our ideal house, it would have this or this or that. And I was like, ask me what my ideal house would be. Mm -hmm. And she's like, what do you think of when you think of your ideal home? I was like, I imagine a spaceship. I, I want to live on a spaceship. I don't uh, think about homes. You don't think about like things you would do modify. You don't think about ways no. to modify your existing. Well, home. you think about sky's the limit. No costs are, are a problem. You can have whatever you want. I'm going to live in a spaceship. All right, Ryan. Okay. Close your eyes. All right. Imagine all the people. Mm-hmm. That's all. That's it. That's it. That's all. Is there religion? Uh, I, I don't think there is. Interesting. I don't think there I, is. If I, could only, if I could only imagine. So when I think of like... <laughs> uh, <laughs> some people say... I need, I need, you know like, what, you I know need what? like five more, five more beers for you this. You know what? Some people say that I'm a dreamer. But I'm not. John Lennon said that. <laughs> Michael Scott. <laughs> I 
right. When I, but I'm going to try to. Not. I'm going to try to imagine an improved tuner here, an right. ideal tuner for me. It's stereo. I like. <laughs> no, but it has an effects loop. Actually, that's not a bad idea. A tuner with an effects a loop. A tuner that it also has another utility. Or a like tuner, a, a tuner AV switch. A tuner that is an effects loop. Or like a noise gate. Like give it another function. Right. You know, like have some sort of like fancy buffer in there that you could turn off and on mm -hmm. and things like that. I really like the big screen on this. So I'd want to keep a big screen. Um, I'm not, I don't think I need a switch. This beer is really good. Man. It is really good. Well, I guess if it has the looper, you know what? Two foot switches. <laughs> one for a looper, one for the tuner. See what I'm imagining is you have that. You're going to need presets. That loop is always by, is always bypassed. It's always running. Well, no, I guess it's not always bypassed, but you have the option to bypass it, so you can. So it's like, especially say you're doing a one man show, right? So uh, I guess if you have Here's a one man show, you can put your drum machine after your tuner. I want the pedal to be this big because I want the screen, you know. Mm -hmm. But I. A tuner doesn't need to take up that much space. It can have another utility. So give it another foot switch. Give it uh, extra jacks to be a a, a loop. Uh, you know, like a, a, a switch looper, not mm -hmm. uh, not a mm -hmm. signal looper. Um, or to have some other function. Um, I said years ago, and a product ended up getting made, uh, that I wanted a clock on my pedal board. I still think it would be oh. a great idea for a pedal like this. It's, gotta be, it's in there somewhere. A pedal like this that's got a big screen on it to have a clock on it so you can see what time it is. You're on stage, you're playing, you need to know when your set's going to be over. It's so, not a tuna. But it's it not a tuna. A, but it is a clock. It is a clock. Oh, I was holding it upside down. The chronograph. Yeah, from TS Engineering. That's right. Do you, think, do you think he still sells those? I don't know. It's, a, it's, it's fun that we spun that idea on the podcast when we were so new and, he, and someone ended up making a product. Um, so, yeah. Big screen, clock, uh, uh, looper, built-in looper. Alexa connectivity, so you can check your home security system while you're, well, yeah, there, while you're at the gig. There needs to be an app. It needs to have a camera built. No. <laughs> I'm trying to pin this down, Steve. I like that this hat. Maybe it could be a power supply. You're, it's, it's a top-loaded power supply on your pedal board. Because this has the the power out, you could mm -hmm. technically power a couple pedals off of it. I'm sure. Yeah, that's but how the if, that's what the TU2 is designed. But to do what if it was also. a full blown power supply? And this thing's with designed to do jacks it. up and down the side. I think uh, there's a company that makes one of those. You might be right. I'm not going to look it up. I mean, how do you improve a tuner? It's already a perfect creation. I mean, all you can do is like make it more accurate or less accurate, right? What if it could assign, you could assign colors to an RGB tuner to different, um, to different keys. So like E is red mm -hmm. and then blending to F, it turns orange. So no, to, 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 to blending to G, it turns orange and you get the rainbow, the rainbow across. So like, you don't even need to see your tuner. You just need to see what color it is. To know if, mm. like, you don't need to get a full glance of the of the screen. You can tell just by the color, the the shade that it is. That's I, I actually I really like that idea. And There's, then you could plug like a light strip into one of these power outputs, but it, it, and then would, you would it start would to control the light strip. Like you got these light strips up here that yeah. can change colors. You would start to think in color, and you would associate. It would be like what is that synesthesia? Is that what it's called? Uh, Where you can see maybe colors when you hear sounds. Something like, like that. Like it would be a synesthesia, synesthesia, I'm saying the word wrong, a trainer where mm -hmm. it's like, oh yeah, just, you know, A is purple. It's just purple. Like if, you know, like, and I know exactly which purple, like, mm -hmm. you know, if it's a little sharp, it's, it's a little bit more, you know, red. If it's, if it's a little flat, it's a little bit more blue. You know, like, you know, that exact purple of perfect A. Right. That would be I like, fun. I like that idea. Yeah. I like that idea. Have we done, <laughs> have we beat this topic to death? I don't know, Is man. there anything else we can say about tuners? Well, you see, Ryan, the first tuner. What's was like the a, worst tuner? Invented, and I'm not talking non-functional. Like if it doesn't function or if like it, it's not accurate, like that's obviously bad. But what's like your least ideal tuner situation? Boss to you too. <laughs> <laughs> on, an, on an outdoor stage oh yeah if you can't see the screen like this yeah. thing's freaking bright like i could see this is it grayscale 
No, it's 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 color. It's two, it's two color, but you get to choose the color. So it could oh, be a lot weird. of different colors. Because I'm thinking of the old the old Strobo Stomp. No, but the the background just, stays really dark, and uh-huh. and it, the 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 text on it just pops, and it's huge. Oh, wild! You know what? Yeah, I don't think I've ever actually. Did you make a video? Did you ever make it? It probably needs it's not. Pl- it's it's yeah. Here, just plug this into it. <laughs> it's not going to know. I'm going to have to plug it into That's a guitar, the output Steve. Side. you got to plug it into the input side. Oh, what did I do wrong? What you did wrong is you're not there very you smart. I'm not very smart. That's the problem. <laughs> well, look at that. It's t- I'm holding the jack right now. And it's yeah, it's uh, tuning the frequency of your body. T- yeah. You're just sending it. Wait a minute. Sh- you're just shorting it out. No, I'm, I'm going in between B and A. A sharp. What do you t- what do you tune at, Steve? It's gonna be the same. I'm a B and an A sharp. Yeah, I guess it's the same, isn't it? I, yeah, I, you know, I was I was about to start a new religion you around know what this. The, you know what that is? It's bzzz, right, right. Bzzz, bzzz. Anyways, happy 440, Steve. What do you think about that 432 cult? <sighs> scary I, stuff that's, right that's what i want to listen to when you I know like i don't trust I, when them. my body feels a little out of whack yeah, I, wait are you one of them steve one of have them. you been brainwashed and well, indoctrinated by the 432 some, cult some of us are right and some of us are <laughs> everyone else <laughs> oh man if you start calling me a sheeple steve uh the podcast might be over <laughs> Uh, not unlike some sheeple, I tune my instrument the correct way, and when I play with other musicians, I make them tune to that as well, yeah. even if it's a grand piano. Yeah, piano. Retune that bitch. Yeah, players hate me. <laughs> Do you think that there's any value to that, though, the, the arguments behind 432? I think if that's what you want to tune to and everyone else wants to tune to it, sure. then, you know... It's but not, th- it's not any different than like to me. It's not any different than like oh, we all tune to E flat. Right, right. It's just a thing. There's but it's, no, there's no magic. Right. Well, it's like the, the, the Chuck, our, Chuck Chuck Missler called. He wants his tuning back. Uh, our 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 cultural what we're used to culturally is oh. very distinct, specifically tuned set of notes. Mm-hmm. And so when you if you did do something different like your own tuning. It is going to stick out in people's ear in a good way or a bad way, right? Like it's not necessarily good. It could be, a, it could be, could sound bad to people, but it could stick out in a way in theory. But like, whenever it's presented in forums and wherever, it's like, oh, you guys don't understand uh, the natural res- the natural resonance of the entire universe is four thirty two, and the Catholic Church uh, changed that to try to control our minds and make us mind slaves and blah 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 and that's why we play in 440 now instead of 432 right and like the big pile of conspiracy theories and you know uh, diagrams of the shocker and things like that and you know all sorts of uh spiritualism tied into 432 and crystals there's crystals involved mm-hmm. as well uh like all of that like i mean i don't want to i don't want to crap on anyone but it's it's nonsense right I mean, I heard Jesus is a witch, so. (laughs) Is he, though? I mean, I don't know why. That's just what somebody said. (laughs) Because he did magic tricks? I don't know. I didn't watch the video. I just saw it as a video title. All right. All right. Steve saw a video title. All right. Well, Steve doesn't want to talk about the metaphysical because he's a sheeple. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> he's not ready to uh he's not ready to explore new information and he just wants to go off of can, what's can a boss you know spoon fed to him by you know the the the, the big media can a boss to you too even tune the to lamestream media has steve brainwashed into 440 mm-hmm. and now i'm into 432 okay 430 as well how wild are you that's so, so wild stallions of you <laughs> all right so we do an ad yeah, let's do an ad. Let's do an ad. Or will it do us? Uh, this what? was sent to us by Greg. Greg, this is a Tokai Blazing. Whoa, this looks cool. It does look cool, doesn't it? Uh, this is one of the guitars that people were saying the Gibson Theodore was influenced by. 
that top side of it is basically half a Gibson Theodore. Yeah, Tokai Blazing Fire. It look it's got a lot of cool details. These Tokai Blazing Fires are awesome. Whoa. HSS Super Strats. The pickups on these are killer. The humbucker is warm and articulate, but can get real mean and nasty when you push it. The single coils give you the snappy, springy, stratty goodness you know and love. Set up for low and fast action. So fun to play in, S- in excess to the max. What? What does this guitar have to do with in excess? Did they play? Did in excess use them? I don't know. Maybe he's trying to say that this that uh, you need this guitar tonight. <laughs> in excess is a great band. That's the only song. Actually, I know other songs by them, but not by name. I'm looking up in excess guitar. Let's see if any of them played this Tokai here. Uh, you know what? One came up. It's the kick guitar, apparently. Oh, and oh, here's a picture. Yeah, they he's totally playing one right there. Look at that. Dang. What do you What do you know? So if you're an NXS fan, here you go. Yeah, it's eight hundred dollars. You know what? It looks great. Like it's a really funky body shape, mm-hmm. but there's a lot of details here. Uh, first of all, it has a German carve, but on the back, yeah, that beautiful German carve is hidden on the back. Uh, but it has a funky carve on the top too. That lower horn is like segmented away from the body, a different thickness mm-hmm. than the rest of the body. You have a comfort heel. You have that th- that Gibson Theodore like tulip sort of aspect with the horns. I just wish the the pit guards kind of beat up. Yeah, but which it, I mean, it's a mere pit it guard. Kind of so. looks cool, beat up. Does it? It kind of does. Mm-hmm. It looks aged. Like if it was pristine. Every time you would look at it, it would have a new fingerprint on it because it's already yeah. beat up. It's like the the foil the foil uh, application on the top of it is wearing away, and you're seeing clear plexi mm-hmm. underneath. Mm-hmm. It's kind of a cool look, and already looks aged. It looks like it's been on the moon. You know, it looks kind of sci-fi, and I like that the bridge is sitting inside of the pick guard, and the pick guard is relatively thick, so the bridge is like level with the pick guard. There's something really fun about this guitar. Man, some of these are up yeah. on reverb pretty high. I guess there's different models. And the headstock is cool. The the the, the line of tuners are recessed into the, the headstock. Do you think this is a refinish? A lot of them... Um, um, if oh, it is, it looks good. This one says it's a... This particular one is a reissue. Um... Interesting. I like the the kind of like awkwardly translated slogan on the headstock. Tokai Blazing Fire, the new legend of the guitar history. I think that's charming. <laughs> I would totally own this. I would absolutely own this. I don't even know what it plays like. I'm sure it plays great considering NXS played it. Not this exact one, but, you know, the model. Right. I think this might be a reissue. You think it's a reissue? So, apparently, Mike and Mike's Guitar Bar has one on Reverb that they are selling. Uh, and it says it's a uh, reissue. The original was an aluminum body Talbo. Uh, and they are selling this one for, this is a red one with a black pit guard. They're selling it for $700 plus shipping. And so you sh- I'm not sure. It might be original. It might be a reissue. Either way, I think it's rad. Well, a lot of the ones that seem to be claiming to be original, they all have uh, on that little, on that. Uh, oh, they have the print on the thing. lower they horn. They have the print on the lower horn that says Talbo. Ah. Uh, you might be right. Well, either way, it's freaking cool. And I like it. I don't know. If, I don't know if that price is fair. I'm not going to, I'm not going to impulse buy it based on that price. It's 800 bucks. You know, yeah. it is what it is. If I ever run across one, I'm going to pick it up and play it. This one is a, two th- a 2000. So this would be a reissue. Yeah. I think the reissues are like around 800 and the originals are like a thousand to some people have I these mean, listed looks, for like 20 or like 20 uh, for $2,000. It looks pretty well played for being a reissue. Well, the reissue was like still 20 years ago. Okay. Sure. So. Sure. All right. Oh, it, I mean, it's a cool guitar. It's a cool looking guitar. I just don't know about that brand. 
<laughs> I don't know about the prime. I don't know about prime. I don't know about the prime. Yep. You know, one thing's for sure. Yep. Is not a tuna. It's not a tuna. And this is episode 440, where we only talk about tuners. You know who else is not a tuna? Who's a, Who else is not a tuner, Big Steve? ear pedals. That's true. Yep. But they are a woodcutter. I'm holding the woodcutter right now, Steve. How did you know? Uh, I saw it on the table. Oh, I thought you were going to do another Are We Psychic joke. That was the last episode. <laughs> was it a joke, or was it just a dumb thing I kept saying over and over again? But What's the difference? Anyways, either way, the woodcutter is flat out my favorite rat. Mm -hmm. And I'm not just saying that. I mean it. This is what I grab when I want a rat sound. And I have a lot of rats around here. I want a rat. I have a lot of options when it comes to rats. I want to rat. Rat. (laughs) (laughs) I was hoping you'd say it at the same time. One, two, three. Rat. Rat. All right. It's just, there's something magical about it it just feels a little bit creamier a little bit warmer a little bit more like home it's a good pedal it's a good pedal it's it's the rat you want to come home to the woodcutter if you want one head on over to big pedals.com if there's none currently available get on their mailing list so you'll find out when yeah. they when they are available and this episode is also brought to you by string joy string joy i have put in an order for strings and if i haven't yet Editing Ryan is like, oh, I'll do that right now. I want some strings. Strings. <laughs> I want two some strings. strings. Oh, some strings. I want makes... six. Steve, I want six strings. No, I want. You don't want two strings. Maybe six or four. I'm not sure. Yeah. But you can order custom sets from String Joy. They're affordable. They're normal prices for strings. They're like $11.50 starting out. Yeah. Uh, if you get three packs, then you get free shipping. If you get six Dang. packs, then you get uh, a discount and you get free shipping. There's, it's like 10% off or something like that. Uh, use our link down below to thank them for sponsoring yet again another episode of the content that you love on 60 Cycle Hum. Yeah. So go check out String Joy. They make good strings. We're going to have some soon, and I'm going to be putting on my guitars for a while. Uh, and, you know, I've used them before, so I already know that they're good, and I'm excited to get some more. Yeah. You know, since we're already here, uh, let's do some quick housekeeping. Housekeeping is part of the show where if you would like to support the show... Uh, like many fine folks have done, uh, you can head on over to patreon.com slash 60 cycle humcast and sign up for as little as $1 a month. You know, Patreon uh, suggests that they you told have, us to stop doing $1. Yeah, they told us that there you should not have a tier. The lowest tier is three. should be $3. And we said, nah, $1. We like $1. Yeah, we would do 50 cents if we could. Yeah, you want to give everyone an opportunity to feel like they're supporting us in any way that they want. I to. mean, we like five dollars and ten dollars. You can pick whatever tier you want. You know what but it is? We wanted to keep it at one dollar. We want to provide pride of ownership. Yeah, in your favorite podcast. Think of this as uh, in, 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 an employee stock ownership mm. podcast. Mm. Mm. You'll never ESLP. get any financial return, but it will enable us to make more content for longer. Yeah. So there is that. It's kind of like an MLM. <laughs> You're investing in the future of your questionable entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Do uh, you want to open some mail? Uh, yeah, I do. I was about to say, I don't think we have any, but then I remembered we that do. we do. We, we got some boxes. You got, you got a, This whoa. one's for you. These are from Gator. Now be careful with these, Steve. They might be delicate. We think we know what these are. Well, Steve I know knows for sure what they are. He had correspondence that I didn't have. Well, you could have had it. I didn't have it, though, Steve. This was a complete surprise to me when I went to UPS today to see these. Oh, I had no one, idea. This one says, Ryan, thanks for hanging out with us at GearFest. Will this one say Steve? I don't know. We'll find out. Steve, thanks for hanging with us at GearFest. You win hardest hit. Yes! What? Does yes! Mario say that? No. What? You won the hardest hit? Someone was paying attention. This Damn! Is, this is how you know Gator Gator was paying attention. Ah! <laughs> so we didn't even publish that video because the audio was messed up on it for reasons. But they had this booth set up where you could hit their cases as hard as you wanted to with a baseball bat. And Steve just went ape on it. I, I'm sad that I did not break the case or the bat. You, I opened the case. You opened the case. What's 
is cool, man. This is the uh, Gator Titan Series. What, do you, what would you call this? Gear case? What is this for? What it's like a Pelican case, but beefier. I don't, I've never owned one of these. Well, now you do, do Steve. You it's could transport foam in here. You human to, organs in this. You get to poke out the foam to fit the shape of your things. Yeah, yeah. It's got the, the grid on there. You cut it out. Put whatever you want in there. You can make the most secure, over-the-top pedal board in there. I'm going to fill it up with camera gear is what I'm going to do. Nanook pr Protective Cases. Apparently, that's who uh, they are partnered with to manufacture these. When uh, when my kid ends up doing the, the, the egg that you drop off a building thing in school... I'm just gonna hand him this and like just put it just put it in this. <laughs> these are these are IP67 rated cases. Holy hell! I didn't know that. I don't know what that means. It means it's waterproof. Oh, cool! I don't know how far down IP67 is. Like put it put it on a boat. But yeah, you can put, take it in a submarine. Take it scuba diving. Well, if you ever need a film on a boat, you can keep your camera gear in one. No, of these these are seriously beefy. Thank you, Gator. You know, I know this is like we went to a thing, so they're sending us a thing. Or now we're opening it like it's regular mail. I like that you you gave them that address. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you could have just given them my home address. <laughs> I send every. I'm sending every piece of mail. All right. Everybody to this address. Yeah. Why not? Why not? This is, I'm, this is so cool. You should frame that. They remember. They remember. You should frame it, and you should frame mine right next to it, so people see that I definitely didn't win. I thought I hit it pretty hard. You, you did hit it pretty hard, just not as hard as me. <laughs> I tired myself out. Steve I was, was going so hard, he got and exhausted. I had COVID when I did it. Whoa, shoot. Maybe I would have broken stuff Dude, if I didn't have COVID. Should we test them again here at home? Yeah, now that I'm COVID free. Bring bring your favorite bat <laughs> next week. <laughs> no. Bring your bat next week. We'll hang it up. I don't from, want to break a bat. From the <laughs> bring the bat that you hate the most, I guess. Actually, I have a couple like cheap wood bats that right. probably would break. I don't want to. Do, I don't want to break. You don't stuff, break they had bats at the booth that had broken from people yeah. hitting those things, and those they were all like pretty beefy. Like they were not cheap bats. No, they were the they real, were, real they bats. Were legit. Yeah, I could tell because I know bats. Trust me, I'm wearing a jersey, and I'm wearing a wild stallion shirt. This is not my first wild stallion shirt. This is my second wild stallion <laughs> shirt. <laughs> and I'm I'm happy about it. I lo I love Bill and Ted. That's that's not a secret. All right, what are we doing now? Uh, we're doing Handmade Dean. Ah, yeah. Here we go. We've got a Dean Z-style guitar. Now, when this says it's a Handmade Dean, what the hell? Okay, I made this guitar a few years ago, Alder Body, Maple Neck, and did some figured maple and walnut veneer work. Uh, has hip shot tuners and a Schecter USA Super Rock 2s with a coil tap for the neck pickup. Okay, it just says Handmade Explorer Guitar. Explorer? Um, Jeffrey isn't Maslin. Explo isn't Explorer a Gibson model? It is. I think Jeffrey Maslin was trying to rustle our jimmies by telling us it was a handmade Dean. No, I, I gave it that oh, title. Oh, you Steve. gave it. You gave it a title. <laughs> I was doing a little. Well, he, it, what, the, the, what the issue is, Steve, the issue is brand confusion. I looked at mm -hmm. this and immediately thought of Dean instead thought of Gibson. A Dean. So, yeah. I, okay, real quick. Okay, first of all, let's talk about this, and then we'll talk about that, but let's talk about this. I don't want to talk about that. I want to talk about it. It'll be real fast. Okay. I'll keep it brief. Yeah. This is really well done. It's not bad. It's got a couple little quirky things. It's, you know what it... Dude, 375? No, it looks great for 375. Um, With Schecter like, USA Sewer Rock 2s? Here's the thing. There's ways that that food and guitars are different. Believe it or not, if you think of like a handmade, homemade, like chicken pot pie, and think of that versus like your standard restaurant mm -hmm. chicken pot pie or even a microwave chicken pot pie, the difference is obvious. You obviously want the homemade one, right? Yeah. But guitars are different. Mm -hmm. But I feel like this is as close as you can get to that like, I kind of want the homemade one. Right. Like it, it has that charm. It has that authenticity to it. I kind of want the, I want the handmade, just like grandma used to make Dean Explorer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, there are a couple of things. No, I mean, you mean Dean Z. Oh, the Gibson Z. Um, yeah. The, the spacing of 
the furals is not great especially bad when you see it from the back like it, 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 it actually i think it looks cool from the front it's not as bad it on, looks the cool front. on the front on the back it looks really weird they're doing like a curved thing on the front they have so many straight lines on this they should have just done a straight line there's no need to yeah. introduce a curve into the design here um i don't usually go for the sandwiched wood look on guitars but this one feels different and i think it's because the wings mm -hmm. the grain is going like at like a 30 degree angle yeah against yeah. the center stripes and i think that there's something really fun it's about a, the visual nice motion touch. of that yeah i like that a it's lot got a roller bridge it's got locking tuners. Things fall apart a little bit on the back. You can definitely see the hand tooling and where the stain settled into hand tooling. And, you know, where, uh, you know, the neck heel carve is pretty yeah, yeah. rough. To me, this kind of just looks like it's uh, it's already a little broken in. It's going well, to it, wear real nice. The, ba the back of it looks like the fake aged table at a sit-down pizza hut. You know, it's like it's someone they painted on stain to make it look extra grainy. And then they threw, you know, a couple sharp objects at it to put dings right, and dents right. in it and stuff I like know, I that. I think it looks good. But yeah, I think from the front, it looks really great. I mean, especially, I, I, I wouldn't say that if they were asking a thousand bucks. No, I, that's the thing is that I think the, the price here, makes it make sense. It's 375 for, uh, yeah, for 375 I think it looks cool. I'd want to know where the neck came from. Did he make the neck? Doesn't say. It's it's a set neck, so I have to imagine this started as a kit or something. But I don't know. I think I think it looks pretty good. Yeah. I think that the woodwork on the top is I think I think it's it, either a veneer or it's just stacked on top of I think it looks better than 37 like I agree. It looks better than 375. Uh, but if it was like 600, even if it was like 600, it'd be like, mm. no, that would be too much. I think nor where's the edge. I think, I think 500, I think is the edge. I think North of 425, and I'm, and I'll start going like, mm, I, I'm going to haggle with you. I get it. But I'm, right, gonna I'm saying with you. if it's, if it's above 500, I'm not even bothering. No. To, yeah. To contact. This person's unreasonable at 500. I'm like, mm, maybe I can get you down to like 425. Right. 400. Right. Right. I don't know. We don't at 375. I don't even think I would haggle. We don't No, No, this is sold. Uh, at, we don't usually see home done things that we're like, yeah, that looks great. Yeah. I like this. And it doesn't look like I said, like the, the, the chicken pie, uh, analogy, it doesn't look factory. It doesn't look perfect. It doesn't look professionally made, but something about it looking hand done makes it charming. I'm looking at the upper edge of the body too. It looks like it's got a little angulation to it. I don't angulation? Know, is, is that normal for an... I don't, I don't even know normal. what that word means. You see how it's like... And my picture keeps turning. The, the people at home won't see that. That's fine. I, I just want you to see it. You see how it's like flat here? Yeah. And then it looks like... Do you think... Is it just the angle of the photo? Or oh, you is think this, it's just wavy? It, no, it looks like... It looks like it's like a semi-arm cut here. Oh, I see. Like a comfort cut. Yeah. Oh, it might be. It might be. It's hard like to it's tell. a real shallow though. Yeah. All right. Uh, what are we doing now? Uh, so what's the next part of the show? So Steve? A couple weeks ago now, uh, Dean had a real bad week. Oh, you wanted to talk about Dean. Dean had a real bad week. I don't know what's worse that Gibson won their lawsuit against Dean Man, for copyright bad. infringement. The fun that there's a, there's some funny things about that. Um, one is that they were for damages. Their award was four thousand dollars, right? <laughs> so the judge was basically like, or jury, or whoever decides this. I don't, I don't really know. I didn't. I read one article and I sure. forgot most of it. I read the title of one article uh, and gave up halfway through the title. But uh, basically, they were awarded four thousand dollars in damages. So to me, that sounds like the judge is like, yeah, you're right, but like, no one's really like they're stealing your your IP. Yeah. We agree, but nobody's confusing a Dean for a Gibson. It's just nobody should even be trying, right. or at least Dean shouldn't, whatever. $4,000 in damages. Uh, the kicker on that is that now, I don't know if it was part of the agreement or if Gibson is just trying to get it as part of the deal, or I don't know how this stuff works, but Gibson's legal, and this is why 
big, this, you know, this is the corporate lawsuit thing with everything, right? Uh, remember when those G- Dean or those Gibson guitars had tunas? See, brand confusion. Headstocks? Yeah, yeah, we could have talked about those tuners, the the the, the robot tuners that came in, included in all those Dean guitars. Yeah. Um, but uh, Gibson is trying to get like three hundred and forty thousand dollars in legal fees. Oh my gosh! So that's like the killers. They're saying, "Well, we won the case. Stop means you were wrong. So that means you should have just given up from the beginning. But since you didn't, we had to pay three hundred forty thousand dollars in order to get you to do the right thing. So I now you Gibson need to do the right thing. Gibson spends more than that each year on lunches. <laughs> I hope not, man. I mean, how many employees are they giving free lunch to? Not their employees. They're, they're like... Just schmoozing? They're schmoozing like people that, you know, come into the Gibson garage and when stuff like When YouTubers that. come into the Gibson garage, yeah. they're like throwing... The, Three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. No, I bet. I bet they. Sp- I bet that they have a bigger budget than that for entertaining every time. Every import time. important important I mean, people. I'm not saying YouTubers are important, but like like when they when they bring people, you know, like Slash comes over and shows up at the Gibson Garage and like, well, we're going out for food after this, you know, like things like that. You know, yeah, they have yeah, an entertain. Want, I bet they have an entertainment budget. Probably have. I mean, they got to keep all that. Isn't there a lot of liquor in the Gibson Garage? Yeah, like and a lot of like got, top, good, like top shelf stuff. Mark right? showed me that trash can that he bought, and it took him forever to find that perfect trash can. That tra- that trash can can't be cheap, is all I'm saying. Uh, you know? So so okay. Mark so, Agnesi told he he was really passionate about this trash can, <laughs> and I it's it's the thing I remember the most about getting to hang out backstage in the Gibson Garage in right. Nashville is Mark going on and on about this gold trash can. If you if you guys didn't realize this already, by the way, I am not a legal expert. <laughs> I am. I just refused to, to make myself liable by having opinions. Uh, but the, so the other thing that's like wild about this is the same week. Like it was, right. it might have even been the same day. Armadillo Corporation or whatever, who is the parent company for Dean, fired the CEO of Dean because apparently he's been embezzling from the company, and he's embezzled four hundred and twenty somewhere around four hundred and twenty thousand dollars nice from the company that's a funny number uh now the wild thing is that he's being sued by his mom <laughs> or like maybe it's not maybe sued's not the right word because i think embezzlement, why does this all feel so on brand in, for like the you know the 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 visual culture that is dean <laughs> right <laughs> like dean is like the, the the trashy guitar company, right? Yeah. I'm not wrong, right? So, so I guess like the, like Schecter is the the trashy guitar company that has their act together and pays their bills, but buys an, an obnoxious truck. But Dean is definitely like the guitar company that totally does not have its stuff together, right? Like it makes it it does good work. It, it has its act together on the job and stuff like that, but its personal life is falling apart. Mm-hmm. You know, like it's having a rough spot, and it seems like it's always having a rough spot. It always seems like it's someone else's fault too. You know, the person I'm, I'm the the guitar company I'm talking about. You know who I'm talking about? Yeah. So that type so, of person. So it's that whole thing where it's like, oh man, Gibson's gonna put Dean out of business. Apparently, Dean's been trying to put themselves out of business. <laughs> right. Right. You know what? Dean should sue Gibson for copyright infringement of trying to put Dean out of business. That is their whole thing. <laughs> oh They've God. been doing that for way longer than Gibson. Oh my goodness. How dare they muscle in on their territory and try to <sighs> damage the reputation and, and damage the, the, like the, what Dean is capable of and legally allowed to do. That's Dean's job. And they've been doing it very well all by themselves. Okay. <laughs> they don't need your help. Gibson, don't. And it's going to lead to brand confusion. I don't really, um, and this, this is where... Uh, this what if is, Dean this, otherwise has been operating like know, a right. perfectly well-oiled machine and we're just sitting here shitting on it and well, I'm going to feel awful because someone's going to correct me. Like, I, well, I work for Dean and it's actually a wonderful place to work and they take good care of us. I'm going to feel terrible. I will say we are, we are almost an hour into this episode, so I'm not expecting really to get much in the way of responses, but I'd be interested in knowing if any of our listeners... Uh, if they, if any of them own a Dean, but not just, oh, if, I'm sure if, they do. Hold on. Not just if they own a Dean, but when they bought it, mm. because were I, you drunk? I don't think I've seen a Dean in like honest. Now I haven't gone to a lot of shows in the last, you know, five years. The only Dean's I let in my house are Jimmy Dean's. Oh my gosh. But I don't feel like I've seen a Dean on a stage oh. in like 20 years. Well, we don't go to those types of shows. You and me, but I'm saying like, 
it's that's like because maybe no, for that's like, totally because you know like, you'll because like, you'll see you'll see, like if I saw a Jackson on a stage, I'd be like, oh, that's interesting, but it wouldn't shock me if I saw a Dean on a stage at the types of shows that I go to. I'd be shocked. I'd be floored. Just I can't believe. I'm it. just thinking like in general, like uh, if somebody walked in with a Gibson, if somebody kind of came to. Well, right. I don't have a home church anymore, but if like when I was playing in church, if they were like, Hey man, we got, we got this uh guest guitar. So you're going to play bass this week. And the guy came in with like a Jackson right, or like Charvel or whatever. Like I'd be or like, even oh. one of the more pointy Ibanez's. Yeah. I'd be like, Oh, that's sick. Or I'd be like, Oh, it's an Ibanez or, or even whatever. if it was like a, a BC rich, it wouldn't be that wild. Yeah. Uh, I would be surprised to see, I, you know, but yeah, but like, I feel like Dean doesn't even have like kid appeal. Uh, according to our friend at Pitbull, mm-hmm. the 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 dime bags sell regularly. Like people are always oh, buying okay. that, but that's because it's a dime bag. Yeah, it's not because it's a Dean. So I guess I'm thinking of like because Dean's uh, the Gibson Dean thing uh, it restricted the um, the V, the Dean V, the Dean Z, which was their right. Explorer, and the Dean. Uh, I don't remember what it's called. But it's basically their single cut, they'll, which they'll, their single cut look doesn't look anything like a Les Paul, but it's a single cut. So I guess you whatever. Think, yeah, they got that one just thrown in and Dean was probably like, oh, we don't really sell yeah. that one anyways. Uh, do you think they'll just come out with a modified version? I don't know. You think they'll come out with one where like it's got a, a, one of the, the wings on the, the V is a different length. You know what every other company does. It. And then they can get sued by Randy Rhodes' estate. Right, right. Um. Yeah, and, and you know that's that's not a or no- give a little hook to it or something right. like and, that. And maybe that plays into the whole thing where they're saying like, yeah, Gibson, you're only getting four thousand dollars in damages. I don't. Yeah, that's not what it's about. It's about preventing them from it. And now it sets precedent, so now they're going to go after other companies that. Yeah, yeah. You know, not that they weren't going to anyways, but now they're going to feel empowered to do yeah. it more. It, it's again, it, my I'm I'm kind of just thinking about this from the perspective of like it seems so weird, but then it's Dean as a company. That I, I so I guess two things. One, if you own one and you're watching this, let us know and let us know when you how long ago you got it. How old were you? And then when I last saw it, what kind of music oh, do you play? Or you're saying those people, yeah. And then two, Steve, how old are you? Um, what? Yeah, like what? What kind of dean? I guess what kind of dean do you have? I don't know. Right. I just have so many questions about what kind of people own deans. Like I'm sure they're average people, but it's like we need a poll. Like where where are you finding them? I don't even know when the last time I saw a Dean in a store was. Yeah. I, gu- I guess you said Pitbull sells the dime bags. But yeah. Do they do they have any of the other Deans there? Are there any other Deans these days? Uh, Dean, yeah, Dean, the used, Dean Dean the, used to be. No, those are gone now. Steve, explore the the Z and the V's are gone. Uh, Dean used to be like. You go to a pawn shop, you're going to see Deans. You know what? I guess you go to a guitar store, you're going to see Deans. And I can't remember. I had that pink Dean. Yeah. I was going to say you had that pink Dean. And so I remember when those and like, so the vendettas and those kinds of uh, Deans were all in like the sub $300 range and they sold them at guitar center. I I do remember those kind of BC rich and Jackson themselves and that they budgeted their brand to death. But also like a lot of them, I guess like maybe, maybe guitar center used to have all the Deans and like the Cadillac. Hmm. And all these other the single cut model and all this stuff. Maybe they had all of them, and I just I did. I don't I've, remember. I've that. Always wanted a Cadillac, a Dean Cadillac. Maybe I just always saw them and thought they were Gibsons. Brand confusion. Brand confusion. Brand confusion strikes again. The cat, the Dean Cadillac. I I hope I hope you know Dean hit me up. I've said a bunch of nasty and rude things about you this uh, this episode. Hit me up. I'll 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 film a Cadillac. Send me a Cadillac. I'll compare it to my last ball. You know what brand I'm not? I will do a side by side compare. Send me your nicest Dean Cadillac, and I will do a side by side with my Les Paul, and uh, th- we'll see who wins. You know, you 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 lost the court case. Maybe you'll win this battle. That's what you, I'm saying. You know what uh, brand I don't think I'll ever get confused with another brand? What Chase Plus Audio? That's ever. right. You can't you can't confuse. There's no brand confusion there. When you look at a Chase Plus battle, you know it's Chase Plus you through and through. Three knobs, three knobs. Three switches, a bunch of dips over here. So many dips. This pedal's more creative than you are. Let's just be honest. Uh, it's got a digital brain it's and got an analog more, out heart. Who else? Who else has that going for? Him? It's got more dips than a Super Bowl party, Steve. That's a sports joke I just made. Cool. Yeah. 
Is that a new joke? That's a new joke. Did you just make that up right now? I just now? made a new joke wow. right now. Wow. Anyway, uh, Therme is a delay? Name the dips Analog at a Super delayed. Bowl party. Uh, you got nacho L- cheese dip. LPF, Regen, Glide. No. <laughs> nacho. Not, I said nacho. Guac. Guac. Salsa. Salsa. Uh, pico de gallo. That's salsa. Uh, buffalo dip. You got to have your buffalo Okay, like dip. a buffalo chicken dip or something uh, like that. Sour cream and onion. All right. Uh, ranch dressing. All right. Bean. Uh, bean dip. Oh, yeah. Just bean dip, seven layers. We're dip. not counting all seven layers. No, it's, seven. I'm saying bean dip is just beans. Okay, you're saying two different layers. Seven okay, layer dip is two different types of bean dip. All the bean dip. There's a lot of dips, aren't there? Um, There's uh, got to be a different. You know, and don't say like fancy things like olive spread or oh, like geez, the, I, foie oh, gras yeah. or something olive, like that. Olive. Like, uh, what about yeah, muffaletta spread? No, olive no, no, no. Olive. Like dip. It has to have dip in the name. Uh, Fun dip? You might have fun dip out of the that's Super Bowl I can't. Party. No, come on. I think that's it. I think there's... What about row? You could dip your chip into row. Like salmon row. Is ca- is caviar a dip? <laughs> it's a spread, not a dip. You don't dip a chip into caviar. You spread it with a abalone spoon or whatever. I think there's only eight dips. Correct us if, if, if we're wrong. Uh, if you can think of more what dips. About avo- what about just straight avocado dip? That's not... That's not guacamole. That's not a thing, Steve. <laughs> There's 16 dips on here, What? Steve. That's twice the amount of dips at a Super Bowl party. Oh, spinach. Spinach, spinach artichoke dip. dip. That's nine. We got nine dips. Nine, nine dips convert. Dips. Still seven fewer dips. Well behind. The record set by Chase Bliss Audio. If you want to get your dip on, head on over to chaseblissaudio.com. This episode is also brought to you <laughs> Is that a good sponsorship? Demonic Machines. That's right, Steve. You know what Demonic Machines wants you to know? They want you to know that tone is, is not in the, the fingers. Signal. It's in the signal. That's so. right. And All the right. signal's in the circuit, and the circuit is in the Demonic Machines. What is that pedal called? Uh, the Able Baster Riff. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember how to say it's the a, name. I, I believe it's the Oliboreth. It is named after a demon that causes you to choke on fish bones. But also the cure is to eat the fish. It's a, like a highly modified rat style pedal. It's more is really leans into the fuzz side of rat. So go check out my demo of that. If you want to hear a very different flavor of rat, and I think this is fun. Head on over to demonicmachines.com if you want to buy it. There's links below, guys. Yeah, tell them, links to all this stuff Tell below. them that we sent you. Tell them I heard about you on 60 Cycle Hum, and I am very interested in purchasing one of your fine pedals. We got one last ad. It was sent by Michael Kraus. It is a PV Mantis. I, haven't, I don't know what I'm going to say about this. I just saw it and wanted it. In good condition, a few light dings and scratches, plays and stays in tune, great, professionally set up, low action, fast neck, collar trim, has absolutely no issues and is very adjustable. Very heavy sounding pickup. Get your 80s metal. They did not say hair metal, just metal. Mm, just regular metal. On with this very rare PV. It's an Alfred Main. If this was local... For four hundred and fifty dollars. For four hundred and fifty dollars, I might consider this just because I've never owned a guitar with one of the Kalers. And mm. every time I run into one in a shop, it doesn't have the, the wiggle stick in it. This has a wiggle stick in it. I don't know if it's stock, it looks like a strat wiggle stick. I don't know if Kalers had a, a white tip on him, but this would be a really fun guitar to get the Kaler experience with. And I love that shape. It's such a tiny body. I like small bodied guitars. I'd probably love this guitar. And if I loved it enough, you know, I'd get that refinished. You know, I'm surprised. I'd get that like purple sparkle or something like that. I'm surprised that more companies aren't trying to do, um, do like PV clones. I don't think we're there yet. As a society, we're not there yet. I like wish we were just doing like T T series reissues. I could see Eastwood doing that, you know. But this looks cool. It has the pinstripe headstock, that kind of like yeah. chunky headstock. It has the the beautiful PV spot. Th- this guitar looks like the PV logo. Mm-hmm. Is what's going on. This is a, oh yeah. This yeah. is pure PV. I love it. I think this is great. I think this is a great guitar, and someone should buy it. I don't know if this is a normal price for them. If it's not, if this is high. And then I should definitely buy one used. If I could get one of these for 300, I have one shipped to my house 
for three hundred. These bucks. are American made. I, I think dude, four fifty is the right. No, this is a great price. I think that's the price. And you know that neck is going to be a little bit like on the chunky side. It's not going to be one of those like super shreddy necks or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's going to feel like a little bit like a like a heavy guitar in a way. Like not not for its weight, but for just like its physical presence. There are no PV mantises on Rebe, 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 Reverb. On <laughs> Rebe Reverb. So I'm gonna go buy that. 450. There are no PV mantises on This eBay. is the last PV mantis, and it's only $450. You could go get it right now. Get it while it's hot. Are, this episode was recorded two weeks ago. There's a be poster there with a PV razor, a PV mantis, and a PV Do that red mantis. Uh, mystic. On it. Okay, all right. Uh, That's F, on eBay. F. Mary Kill. Okay, those three guitars. Uh, I'm killing the. I'm killing the K. Sorry, sorry, Chipson. Killing the Klontar. Which one is the Klontar? The, the Klontar. The Klontar guitar. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Um, no, I'm gonna. I'm gonna kill that. That that curvy one. Really? Yeah. You got to send me this picture. I'm going to screen grab it for I'm, you. I think I'm going to uh, bang the curvy one and marry the mantis. I'm going to marry. I'm going to marry the mantis. I think that that is marriage material. But what was the name of the other one? The clon guitar? Uh, I don't know. It's either the mystic or the other thing. I'm, I'm going to bang that one. Like, I like that shape. It's fun, but I don't want to marry it. Okay. You know? But that weird curvy one is too much. Like I'm gonna kill that too many one. curves. Yeah, too many. Well, it's it's just it's just not my style. All right, all you right. know, it's like you know. Oh, I think Klons, it's the I think it's the razor is the, the razor Klon, okay. is the Klontar. <laughs> What's a good analogy for this? Like one's ketchup, one's mustard, and one's mayonnaise, and I definitely don't want the mayonnaise one. All right, but all ketchup. Right. Yeah, I, I all have ketchup from time little, to time, but I definitely am gonna marry. There. I'm definitely gonna marry mustard. You know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I have been eating a lot of mustard on sandwiches. I'm so glad there. you said mustard and not mayonnaise. I, I don't know the last time I owned mayonnaise. We had this conversation recently. You know, yeah, I, you told me you lease it, which is super weird. <laughs> Like, I don't get you, you lease mayonnaise. That like, way, after five years, whatever I have left, I can sell back to the company. <laughs> that's actually... It's, it's not that weird. That's not that weird. Uh, that actually makes sense. Uh, <laughs> I have been on a kick lately getting... Uh, I, I, I've just fully re-embraced just regular yellow French's style mustard. Really? And I've got all the grainy, fancy mustards mm-hmm, in the fridge. Mm-hmm. I've got all the brown mustards. I've got spicy mustards, but there's something about that yellow mustard that just hits right. I don't know what it is, but I've, I've been into just the, the regular standard yellow mustard for a while now. All right. Tell us about the song, Steve. This is sent by Ryan Burnham. He says, dear Bert and Ernie, that's a wrong show. <laughs> Which one am I? Which am I? Am I Ernie? I, Steve, I think you might be Bert. Here's a little bit of technically unfinished, no vocals yet, music I've been working on for my solo project under the name Inpatient Optimist Club. I'm not sure what genre it even is. It's kind of like if the killers got more aggressive and into really, uh, and really into odd time signatures, the song is called Tightrope. It's a WAV, so it might take a minute to download.
That was a fun jam. I think I'm going to listen to The Killers on my drive home now. It's a good groove. I like that. It has, you know, like a new wavy sort of edge to it, too. Yeah. You know, I love instrumentals. All right. Bye, everyone. Stay grounded.